Thank you for watching The Nature Center Show. My name is Michael Price. I'm the director of the San Angelo Nature Center. Today I want to talk about the three species of rattlesnakes that are found right here in the Concho Valley. Now rattlesnakes are reptiles, and like other reptiles such as turtles and lizards, they're vertebrate animals, which means they have backbones. Their backbone, or spine, extends from the base of their skull to the very tip of their tail. As you can tell, snakes do not have legs, but instead have hundreds of pairs of ribs that run down along the spine. Now snakes also shed their skins. As they grow, they grow out of their skin. And so what they have to do is they have to shed periodically as they, as they get larger. Now a snake will grow in its entire lifetime, from the day it's born to the day that it dies. It just so happens that adults grow at a much slower pace than, than, uh, than babies do. And what happens is a lot of people think that you can tell the age of a rattlesnake by the number of, of rattles it has on the end of its tail. That's actually not true. Every time a rattlesnake sheds, it adds a segment to its rattle. As you can see right here, the shed is complete, including the eyes, the eye caps, but it misses the very end of it because every part of that shed extends the size of the rattle. So for example, a baby rattlesnake is born with one small button, and as it matures, as it grows, it sheds its skin, and every time it sheds, it ad adds a segment to its rattle, till eventually it can have a rattle string of up to, we've seen them as large as 20, but typically around 11, 10 to 11 before they start breaking off. But a snake doesn't shed just once a year. Baby snakes can shed up to five times a year, while adults can shed anywhere from two to three times. So there's no real reliable way to look at a snake's rattle and, and tell exactly how old it is. Now the first species we're going to talk about is, is the smallest species of rattlesnake that's found here. It's called the Massasauga rattlesnake. They're also called the sand rattles, rattlesnake or sidewinder, although they are not a true sidewinder that's like found in the, in the Sonoran deserts. This individual here is full grown. It comes from near Barnhart. They've got very small rattles. Their rattle strings are very small and their rattle size is very small. So therefore when they rattle, it's very, very, it sounds a lot like a, a grasshopper or a cicada or other types of insects get it to rattle here. You have to be very close to a Massasauga rattlesnake to hear it rattle. They are highly defensive, as you can see. If they feel any, threatened by anything at all, they'll coil up defensively in a strike pose like this one's doing here and face its predator. If they're really, really scared, they're sit, they'll, scared they'll sit there and rattle their tail. Now, like other snakes, they lack ears. But to make up for that sense of hearing, they will stick out their tongue to pick up air particles out of the air, to taste the air and see what's going on around it. As you can see, he's very nervously flicking his tongue, trying to figure out where he's at and assess the situation, whether he's in danger or not. If he feels threatened, he'll rattle his tail. Again, this is a full grown individual. They reach a length of about 20 inches. Very, very uncommon here in the Concho Valley. They occur in every county in the Concho Valley. They just so happen to be very, very uncommon. Now I'll put, whoops, put this guy back up, maybe. And the next species I'm gonna get out is a little more common than the Massasauga rattlesnake, but it's still not the most common rattlesnake that we have here. But it is by far the most aggressive and the most dangerous rattlesnake that we have. This is called the prairie rattlesnake. The prairie rattlesnake occurs primarily from the Canadian border through the Dakotas, Montana, Wyoming, Colorado, Kansas, Nebraska, Oklahoma, through this panhandle of Texas. The Concho Valley just so happens to be the furthest south that these guys occur. Now this is a full grown individual. They can get up to, up to around three and a half feet. Uh, the average, a little less than that, they average right at 30 inches, or, or I'm sorry, they average right at 30 inches about the size of this individual. And as you can see, they're very, very aggressive. They vibrate their tail very rapidly. They make quick sudden lunges like you just did right there. They'll flick their tongue out quickly to assess the situation just like the Massasaugas and other rattlesnakes do. Followed by short, quick strikes. Now as you can see, a rattlesnake cannot strike the entire length of his body. In fact, very rarely can they strike the half the length of their body. Typically, it's about a third to a quarter of their body when they strike. Now, these are defensive strikes. You have to remember, this snake is a lot more afraid of me than I am of it. It just feels ex extremely threatened right now. 
So he's doing what he can to defend himself. Now, rattlesnakes are different. They're, they're pit vipers. And what that means is right between their eye and nostril, they have a little hole. It's an infrared heat sense, sensing pit. And they utilize that to determine warm areas to bask, to determine prey items, or to d determine pre uh, predators. Other pit vipers include cottonmouths, copperheads, and several other species that are found in South America. Let's see if we can get her back in there. Again, you can tell how aggressive these snakes can be. The western diamondback, which is the one we'll look at next, typically has a very bad reputation for being aggressive. But for the most part, the prairie rattlesnake is by far much more aggressive than the prairie rattlesnake is, or than the diamondback rattlesnake is. The last species of rattlesnake that's found here in the Concho Valley is by far the most common found here. In fact, it is the most common rattlesnake found in Texas and much of the southwestern United States. And that's the western diamondback rattlesnake. Now these guys can get quite large. They're the second largest rattlesnake that's found in the United States. The first is the eastern diamondback found in Florida, Georgia, Alabama, and that area. The western diamondback can achieve lengths of up to seven feet, although they average far less than that. It's kind of like me, uh, or, or humans. Shaquille O'Neal is seven foot one. Are we all gonna get there? Probably not, we average far less than that. Same with these guys, they can achieve lengths of up to seven feet, but average usually between four and five. This individual here is about five and a half feet. He weighs about 15 pounds. Now, western diamondback rattlesnakes, again, are the most common rattlesnake found here in the Concho Valley and much of Texas. They're characterized by the large diamond-shaped blotches on their backs, as well as the black and white banding on the tail. Another nickname for these guys is the coontail rattlesnake. Now you can see this individual has multiple rattles, but these have also been broken off. If you can see the very tip of the tail, you can see where it's broken off. Now diamondbacks tend to be a little more placid than the prairie rattlesnakes do. You can see this individual here just kind of sticking his tongue out, flicking it around, tasting the air, seeing what's going on around him. He doesn't feel completely threatened right now, and therefore he's not coiling up in the typical S position. He's not rattling his tail. Now, that, is, that does not mean if you see a western diamondback in the, in rattlesnake in the wild, you should go up to it, hook it, and try to, try to hold it. These are dangerous animals. Their venom is highly hemotoxic, which means it has a lot of tissue damage. Uh, very few people die from rattlesnake bites, but however, many people lose their fingers or even their limbs from bites. Most people who are bitten are people like myself who are doing th things like this or th things like the rattlesnake roundups. People who are actually trying to collect or handle the snakes are the ones who are in most danger. Very few people are bitten by rattlesnakes just because they happen to stumble upon them. Many hunters in the, in the fall come, come across these guys as they're congregating in their dens for, the, for their winter brumation. Snakes don't go through a, hibernation, a true hibernation like bears and some squirrels do. They go through what's called a brumation, which means their metabolism just slows down. They are ectothermic, which means their, their inside body temperature is related to outside forces. It's dependent upon outside forces. For example, if this snake right here is outside right now, and let's say it's 45 degrees, his internal body temperature would be 45 degrees. However, if I took him outside on a day which was 100 degrees, his internal body temperature would be 100 degrees. That is different from mammals such as humans, uh, bobcats, other mammals, and birds who are endothermic, which means our body temperature stays consistent at all times regardless of outside temperatures. Regardless if it's 45 degrees or 100 degrees outside, our internal body temperature is still going to be 98.6. Again, he's very curious. He's not sure what's going on around him. You see him flicking his tongue. And as I set him up in here, thank you very much for watching the Nature Center show.